I'm glad loves, God loves me in spite of me sometimes. Amen. Hey, yes. Beautiful song. Well, good morning. Welcome to Life Spring. We are so glad you're here. We're glad that you chose to worship with us because worshiping God is better when you're here and we get to do it as a family that just loves God and loves people. And we like to welcome our online audience. Thank you for being part of the family today. Hey, if you are a first time guest, thank you for joining us today. So uh, don't forget, uh, check in today. If you are a first time guest or you've never uh, checked in, you can scan that little QR code right there and uh, it will take you to our web page where you can get the app. You can check in, you can share, you can give. Give us a praise report or a prayer request. Let us know what's going on in your life. Share your story with us so we can celebrate with you and what God's doing. Amen. Let, let, let me not. Forget to check in myself. I'm going to get in trouble. Amen. Drew made my face work today. Aren't you glad your face still works some days? Ah, come on, y'all. y'all. <laughs> it ain't sag too much, y'all. You go past certain age brackets, you understand what I'm saying. It's all right. The rest of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, a couple of announcements. Don't forget, as you check the calendar, women's life group tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, bring food, Mr. Richard, when you come. Hallelujah. Hey, men's life group next week. Yes. And the live students' life group the 28th. Yeah. So, so, ladies, don't forget to come out tonight. I believe they're having chili. So bring stuff to go with chili. Hallelujah. They're excited about that. Just come and grow together. Love on each other. That's why we got each other, right? Okay. I'm going to repeat that. That's why we got each other around here, right? To just love on each other and support each other and be a family when we need it most. That, that's, that's what... That's what church is supposed to do. So come hang out, ladies, tonight. See what God's doing. So I, I, I get the privilege. Make sure. Yeah. So, hey, um, last week we baptized three people, and I got one of them here today. So, Mr. Shane Waller, come on up this way. I'm going to make you come all the way up here. Come on. Come on. Let's get on the camera. It got proof that he did it. All right, there, there's your certificate and your Bible. Congratulations, sir. Yes, we're excited about what God's doing. Proof of a changed life when somebody's willing to get baptized. And we got two more that got baptized last week, so let's give it up for that. Yeah, we'll make sure we get them up here and give them their certificate. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready to grow today? Y'all sure? How many of y'all ready to grow today? Come on, Pastor, bring us a word. Hey, Amen. I, I, I tell you, I love when folks give their, uh, make that public profession of their faith in front of God and everybody that um, I'm going to serve him no matter what. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Wednesday night, I got chastened by God, and uh, so y'all get to hear about it, right? It's the way it works. Um, I told a story, the, uh, a story that an event that took place right in the middle of service, God shut the service down, had me to pray for folks. I was right in the middle of preaching, and God says, no, it's time to pray, and we did, and and come to find out it was our drummer's son that had gotten hit by a car on Slappy and and almost died. And, well, they pronounced him DOA on the scene. But, I mean, you know, God's not through with you. He's not through with you. Amen. And so I, I've been questioning because this has been in my heart for a minute now. God, I don't know about anybody else. They, how many in here needs a miracle from God? See, see what I'm saying? We got a whole world out there that needs a miracle from God. So I'm questioning, God, what is it? Why are we not hearing in the middle of a service, stop, do? 
So now, I, I, I'm going to tell you about my spanking. Because I'm the one doing the questioning. I, I, I mean, I want to see you raise the dead. I've seen you make the lame walk again. I, I've seen you bring that that the world said was dead back to life. I'm looking at a church full of miracles. But, but I don't need yesterday's miracle. I need today's miracle. Well, to begin with, to get... Today's miracle, you got to get out of yesterday's faith and get into today's faith. And I'm like, okay, I got that. But watch, this is what he told me. You're not hearing because you got too much chatter going on. Thus saith the Lord. I don't say that often. What God spoke to me was you, me, not you, me. Now, it may pertain to you. Not you, me. You got too much chatter going on. And you can't hear for the noise. Oh, yeah, I'm talking to somebody. You got too much noise you can't hear because you got too much going on in your head. So, I'm going to be honest with you. If I want what God used to do, I have to do what I used to do. Y'all with me? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. But in order for me to get what I used to get, I have to do what I used to do. So some of us may say you don't do anything different. I do. I, I got chatter going on. Somebody say chatter. It's important we understand chatter. I don't know about you. I used to have an old pickup that I used to drive that had a daggum rattle in it. Rattle. I mean, you couldn't turn the music up loud. The louder you turn the music up, the louder the rattle seemed to get. Amen. You couldn't over, over here not be able to drive that thing and not hear the rattle. That's what my life seems to be lately is a whole lot of rattling going on. And I, I can't seem to stop it because I got this at work. I got this at home. I got this in my family. Then I got church. I got church folk. I got church problems. I got, I got this problem. I got that problem. Then I got nothing but everything on the social media about what's going on in the country. I don't care. Mm. Y'all in the right place at the right time. I'm sorry. I get to preach it and you get to hear it. Uh, you're in the right place. Because if we want the miracles that God has for us, and if we truly believe He is the same yesterday, today, and always, forever, we have to ask ourselves the question, where, where, what's going wrong? I know when the first encounter with him after the cross was when, when he showed up at Pentecost because they all came in in one mind and one accord and they didn't have the chatter. Chatter. We're looking for miracles in God and, and, and we got too much chattering going on. I, I come to tell somebody today, be quiet. I said, I come to tell somebody, be quiet. I'm even better than that. I'm calling, telling somebody, sit down, be quiet, and listen. Shut the chatter off in your life. And everybody said. So here for a little bit, we're going to talk about miracles. Because I, I, I believe we live at a time right now, we need miracles. We need some miracles. Somebody say, I need a miracle. I, I, we do. Listen, even if you don't, there's a world out here that does. We, we, we're living in a time now that, that we have got to get serious about what God is doing. If he raised the dead then, he should be able to do it today. If, 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 he, if he healed the lepers then, he should be able to heal disease today. And watch it. Mm. Hallelujah. Don't let me get ahead of myself. When we talk about a miracle, when God created the world, he put in some place of natural laws. And as a little kid, you have to learn one of them. <laughs> Physics don't change. 
Gravity does not change. If I walk off the end of this platform, y'all going to get a good laugh today. Because I'm going down. Natural law. The earth is governed by natural laws. You're going to have the, the earth to rotate on its axis because God put some natural laws in place. Come on. Sometimes we're looking for miracles thinking that God's going to work outside of natural laws. Y'all, y'all with me? Tim Keller said it like this. We modern people think of miracles as the suspension of the natural order. But Jesus meant them to be the restoration of the natural order. God didn't create us to die. Do you understand that? He did not create us to die. He never created us to have sickness. He never never created the world for us to have addiction. Come on. He He didn't create that. Sin created that. Come on. So today we're going to talk about God, Jesus' last miracle that he performed. We're going to go to John, the 11th chapter. And the only way I can preach this is we got to do the whole chapter. So y'all in for a whole day today. Amen? Hallelujah. John, chapter 11. And he says this in verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany. The village of Mary and her sister Martha. And in parenthesis it says this. This Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick. Was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord. And wiped his feet with her hair. In other words. She'd already been in the presence of God. Y'all with me. She's already been in the presence of God. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Look I know who can heal him. I know who can, hey, who can heal my brother. Because now we're saying he's sick, not dead. So, so she sent word to Jesus. Lord, I love what he said. The one you love. Watch this. You know when you come home from work and your wife says, you know that kid of yours? That's what, that's what she's doing here. She, she's, it's funny to me because she's using some manipulation here. The one that you love, not my brother. In other words, not my child. Your child. Your child's a heathen today. <laughs> Come on. How, how, many you know, how, you, how many of y'all love that when it becomes your child because they're bad? Come on. <laughs> yeah, especially when you got more than one. Um, She says, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. That's the part that messes me up. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. That part messes me up. It does. But I love what Jesus said. He says, it will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. How many of you know if Jesus said so, write you a check on it. If Jesus says so, write a check on it. (laughs) Y'all ain't getting this. If Jesus said so, write a check on it. If Jesus said it, it's settled. Well, see, we all agree with that. But then we read the Bible and we don't agree with it. We read the Bible and we don't agree with it. He, he says that my joy and my strength doesn't come from man. My joy and my peace didn't come from you, and you can't take it away from me. But we give it away. So, so she's being a little passive-aggressive here, right? The one you love. Let, let, let me say this. Jesus used to stop by, and he was invited to their house uh, regularly to have coffee and probably some fried chicken and, you know, rest his sandals and get his feet washed. And, and you know, I mean, he stopped by on a regular. 
Come on. So give me a, let me give you a little context of what's going on here. Bethany is two miles east of Jerusalem. You got to go through the Mount of Olives, Garden of Gethsemane, to get there. And the same Mary that anointed Jesus' feet, watch this, is saying, the one that you love. Come on. See, Lazarus' house and and Mary and Martha's house was a safe place for, for Jesus. Because you got to realize, there was a lot of people that wanted to kill Jesus. So, I mean, he had to pick and choose kind of where he had to go. Oh, I just set you up. He, 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 he had to pick and choose some of the places he go. Some of us need to pick and choose some of the places we go. We, come on. Hallelujah. So, he went by there on multiple occasions. Because as he was passing through, it was on the way. Verse 5 says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. In other words, they were his people. How many in here is, are you his people? <laughs> so that was Jesus' people because he knew them. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer. In the place where he was. I'm sorry. That has to be a typo in the Bible. The one that you love, but yet, I'm just going to stay here two more days. He's dying, but I'll just stay right here. Come on. <laughs> so he stayed two days longer. So when he heard it, I, that's the problem, so. Somebody say so. so. So when he heard it, he made a choice to stay. It, it would be different if it said yet. But no, so means he made a conscious decision to sit here. Amen? I mean, yet would have said, you know what? The traffic's a little heavy. I can't make it. Yet I tried, but I can't make it. For whatever reason. But so? I mean, maybe he yet would say that I don't want to get arrested. That wouldn't make sense. But so don't make sense. Y'all with me? So often, many of us are believing God for a miracle. And our problem is, we have to first learn how to wait on the Lord. We got to wait on the Lord. Come on. How many of you spent any time in the spiritual waiting room? Come on. I, listen. <laughs> I have spent my share of time in the waiting delivery room waiting on children to be born. Okay? My first one, my child, my oldest son, 14 hours. And then my baby girl, she was 12. So. Then there's several of you I've been in the waiting room with you. Sit there and wait. And wait, is this ever going to happen? And we get tired. I don't know about you, but sitting at the hospital is tiring. Come on. For the one setting. Come on. <laughs> Watch this, if you're taking notes. A divine delay is not a denial. A divine delay is not a denial. Sometimes we're in between the burden and the fulfillment of the prayer. God's in the midst of working on us to be able to receive that prayer. And sometimes we get up and leave. We get up and we, and we leave the waiting room before the delivery happens. Come, come on. <laughs> you know, 
How many of you know that Jesus is, he was human, but he was also deity? Amen. So, so at first glance of this story, it's no big deal because, you know, we know Jesus can raise him from the dead. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There was, a, there was a significance of why he didn't come. Sometimes we're looking inside our little problem and our little situation and not seeing the big picture. Begin with this was a, was a symbol of the, the death, burial, and resurrection of himself. Because this is the last miracle before he goes to the cross. Y'all with me? Come on. But how many of you know Mary and Martha? <laughs> Mary and Martha were two different people. One was a worshiper, one was a worker. One worship, one worked. So they viewed everything differently. Can I tell you something? You need to let some people have their opinion and their vision and their view of what's going on. The same thing was going on, but, but they both had different opinions. Come on. And they had spiritual disappointments. Both of them. Jesus, our brother's sick. I, okay. So I'll just stay two more days. Uh, come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all know as well as I know. Uh, you've been at those times that you've you've begged God for something. Come on. I need it. I need it right now. I need it by this day, by this time. I got to have it. God, please. I'll do anything, God. I need this miracle. I need this breakthrough. Mm. But see, they weren't even praying for something for themselves. They're, they're asking Jesus for something for their brother. What happens to our faith when it does not happen in our timing? What, what happens is um, we'll pray those urgent prayers. Come on, because we've all had them. We've had those urgent prayers and say, God, I need, I need it right now. Please show up. Come on. Then time passes and it doesn't happen. Can I be honest today? What happens is we attach God's love to the answer of our prayer. And then we, just, then we have a troubled soul. So we come to the house of God with a troubled soul. Sometimes he does and sometimes he don't. When God's words contradicts itself because he said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we got a troubled soul. Come on. God, I prayed for this. I fasted for it. I did that. I gave. I served. I did everything. I, I served the man of God. I, I served the house of God. I served your kingdom. But I didn't see it. And it's a trouble in, in our soul. I, I get to preach today, y'all. I, I remember on a Thursday morning. Only reason I remember it was Thursday morning. Because every Thursday morning at this time of my life, I was on my way to Jacksonville, Florida. Early morning. I get a phone call from out of state. Back when you had the flip phones. I had one of them Inspector Gadget ones, you know, where you pulled the antenna up, flipped it up. Come on. I was driving and starting a church but I get this phone call it was from a surgeon in West Virginia 
he informed me my dad had just been shot. And I had a very small window of time to get there. I'm between Albany and Jacksonville. I don't even know how I had service. I was on I-10. You don't get service on I-10. I pulled off side the road. Of course, that's the last thing any child wants to hear. And this man told me, you only got a, a short window to get here because it's serious. Been shot right there in the head, and the bullet was still in his brain. I've been praying for that man. I've been praying for God to touch him. What a mighty man of God he could be if you could touch him. To come to find out, his, his wife and her daughter had been murdered, and he got shot. And now I'm... I couldn't be there in two hours if I had a jet plane right there sitting in the interstate waiting on me. So what do I do? I still got to work. I'm headed to Jacksonville. I ain't headed home. I'm headed there. I called my boss. She said, turn it around and come home. I did. And I called one person from the church. I pulled into the parking lot at the church that day. And it was about 25 people that met me. And we prayed heaven down in that little warehouse building with metal folding chairs, with a concrete floor. See, he wasn't worried about all that extra. He shows up anyway. And as we was praying, I got this thing, and I heard from God that said, now go get your daddy. It was like all the weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I had to wait on my brother to come from Mississippi, and so it was late that night before we left here to even go to West Virginia. We drove straight through. We get there. We go to this. It's a Catholic hospital, and the, it was a big ward with multiple beds in it. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we get around other family members and we, and we get around other people. We, we tend to be real timid in our praying. Come on, I, I'm talking to more than just one person in here. We get timid about our prayers. That is one of the first times in my life that I can honestly say I didn't care who and what was around me. That one belongs to me. I come to get him. God said, go get your daddy. I didn't care who heard. I prayed heaven down in that place. My two brothers just took a step back like, this man's possessed. I was. I was possessed with something that was out of this world that was supernatural. And I was ready for God to do what he's going to do. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Three days later. How many? Three days later, that man was sitting in my living room. Still had the bullet in his brain. They couldn't go get it. The only place, this is how good God is. The only place that that bullet could be lodged was in, and talk to me, Steve, right here in the back. It's the only place it could stay and remain. They said, leave it. We'll do more damage trying to get it than, to, than it'll be. Look, he died with that in his brain. Came to my house, and he stayed and decided he wanted to go to Arkansas to be with my other family. So he did. He, he lived another 12 years. And uh, not, not 12 days, 12 years. Watch. But what was so crazy is he goes off up there. Oh, he would tell me every once in a while, I'm so proud of you. I, I, I can still not believe you're preaching. Because he raised me. And I get a phone call from this preacher in Arkansas. He goes on and on to tell me 
He says, you know, your dad's living in this assisted living. It was a, it really wasn't assisted living. It was people that that had, eight, I guess, an older senior citizen kind of apartment complex. He said he's got everybody in that that complex coming down here to my little Baptist church right down the street. He's I'm bringing. He's bringing all of them in. I'm like, you go, God. So the next time I talk to him, he's never said nothing to me about it. The next time I talked to him, I said, hey, uh, I got a phone call the other day. He said, you did? I said, yeah. I said, your preacher called me. He said, yes, I've been going to this little church down. Uh, now, now, he ain't good as you are. <laughs> right off the rib, I said, I know, Daddy. I know, I, I got you. You know how parents are. I didn't see the big picture. I just saw the picture. Y'all with me? I saw the picture. Not the big picture. Everything I've been praying for came to pass. But I'm going to be honest with you. From that trip from Jacksonville back to Albany, there was a lot of questions to God. Y'all help me. Sometimes God is just teaching us His and defining us in His love. Come on. Hell, mm. Hell wants to steal. Heaven wants to give. Come on. If we let anger and disappointment rob our spiritual faith, the enemy will be won. Because some of you in here right now are living with a troubled soul because God didn't come through with what you might have prayed for. So how do we deal with a, with a troubled soul? I'm glad you're here today. Y'all ready for this? Are you, are you sure you can hear, handle the truth? Because, see, the truth is not just for me. The truth is for you as well. Y'all, y'all with me? First, we got to learn how to pray honest prayers to God. I said honest prayers. See, you can call, you can call on God and complain, whine, moan, get mad. He can deal with your anger. He can deal with your complaining. He's a big God. He just wants you to be honest. See, we want to have these super spiritual prayers when God says, just be honest with me. I already know. I already, baby, I already know. 90% of you don't let it come out your mouth. I already know what you're complaining about. Come be honest, but watch. Not honest of the circumstances, honest with yourself. God, where am I jacking it up? Where am I blocking my blessing? Where am I blocking the... Jesus went about always with his disciples when something went sideways. First thing he'd ask him, where did you, where'd you doubt? Ye of little faith. Y'all, come on. Hey. So let's fast forward a couple of days. He tells his disciples that, uh, that are concerned, that they're concerned about their travels. Jesus said, Lazarus is asleep. The disciples said, that'll do him some good. Some of us said, oh, I'm talking to somebody now. Some of you right now need some, y'all need some supernatural uh, touch of God to get some good night's sleeps. Oh, somebody help me. And he says, sleep will do him good. But what the problem is, the disciples didn't really understand anything that Jesus was saying. Finally, Jesus had to say, listen, he's dead. He's he's dead. Come on. 
Y'all help me today. Verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 15 stadia away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them. Watch, there's a crowd gathering now, y'all. There's always a crowd growing to console them about their brother. So then Martha, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not die. I love my Savior. He met them both right where they are. Mary couldn't leave the house. Some of you can't leave your spiritual house. Some of you can't leave the house of yesterday. Sometimes you got so much disappointment of yesterday, you can't leave it. Can I, did I say it good? Did, did I say that? Did you hear that? That, that, that was Mary. Mary was over here going, I'm in depression. I'm in denial. I'm right here. Not Martha, baby. Martha, Martha was like a 75-year-old orthopedic uh, mall walker with orthopedic shoes on. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. I'm talking to everybody in this place today. All of us have been there. If you'd have been here, only if you would have showed up, my brother wouldn't have died in Jesus. I get it. Your, bro your sister's in the house. The worshiper is in the house in depression. And you, the worker, you're mad. She at least went and told her what she, how he felt. She went at least and told Jesus how she felt about it. And everybody said, mm. come on. And you know, both of them were unhappy. They had to be. Mary shows up. Uh, she won't even come out of the house. Martha shows up to Jesus. This is, what, this is, this is how I can vision this. Uh, she shows up to Jesus and says, what are you doing here now? I mean, why you, look, the funeral's over. Look, all the cousins done gathered around, and we done had all the discussions and talked about Lazarus when he was 10, 12 years old, all them silly things he did. The green bean casserole's already in the, in the Tupperware dish in the refrigerator, and here you showing up now. Some of us, come on, we got to learn to pray those honest prayers and tell God how we really feel. Mm. So, some people have a problem with that. I, I can't be that relevant with God. Baby, He already knows. He says, I already know everything that you need before, before you come to me. But come boldly when you come. When you come, be honest. Just say, you know what, God? I'm jacked up. I don't know what to do. I'm confused. My mind ain't working. Y'all help me. Number two, if you're taking notes, how to overcome a troubled soul, I want to encourage everybody in here to believe in him again. Believe in him again. Come on, y'all. I had to go through this one myself. Verse 22. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise from the dead. So now here comes the super spiritual Martha. The old super spiritual Martha has always got an answer for everything spiritually. She, she pipes in here, and she said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. I mean, everybody knows that. As law, that's the way it is. 
We're all going to be risen in the last day. <laughs> Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. Death has no more sting. The grave has no more victory. He's lost all his hold on anybody that believes in me. I encourage you to believe in on him again. Come on. Verse 27. She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he who comes into the world, who comes into the world, when she had said this, she left and called Mary, her sister. Get up out of the house, Mary. Saying secretly, don't tell nobody. But the teacher is here. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when she heard this, she got up and quickly came to him. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? Come on. They said to him, Lord, come and see. Probably one of the most powerful Scriptures in the Bible. In verse 35, he said, Jesus wept. The Latin word for compassion, which is what he had for them too, because he saw them torn. Some of you in here today are torn. Come on. The Latin word of compassion means to co-suffer. In other words, he, he chooses to enter into your pain. And every tear you have cried, you, will, you are never crying alone. He says he is a co-sufferer uh, with you. I, I remember being at that hospital, and like I said, I, I didn't care who was listening. And I didn't just pray some old prayer, Lord, if it be thy will... I didn't get the little vial of, of anointing oil out of my pocket. I brought the big bottle, buddy, because we're going to war. I go in there, and I'm praying over my daddy. And, and I remember those people around me. Watch. Don't ever, ever, ever not, when there's an umption of the Holy Spirit to do something, do it. But make sure you know it's the Holy Spirit. And, and I was praying, and after I pray for him, this lady, she comes over there. She taps me on the shoulder. She said, preacher, will you come pray for my husband? They said he'll never walk out of here again. I had the faith to pray for my daddy because I was mad. <laughs> come on. I, I had the faith to pray for him. I was mad. I don't know these people. I'm brand new in the ministry. I, ain't, I hadn't been in the ministry a year. Before it was over with, I prayed for everybody in that place. My bottle was running dry. I thought I was going to have to go get a refill. <laughs> I was going to the parts store to get some Quaker State or something and fill it up. And, I mean, it was running dry. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. Nothing is over. Until Jesus says it's over. Nothing is over until Jesus says it's over. It's never finished until Jesus says it is finished. That's why when he went to that cross, he had to pin the words. It is finished. Hallelujah. Verse 38. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Man, don't that look sound familiar. Hmm. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, 
said, Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time, there's a bad odor. For he's been there for four days. You know, you didn't come. Four days, you didn't show up. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Get up and walk. Drop those grave clothes. Some of us got grave clothes on called generational curses. That we won't get rid of. He had to take them things off. No, we're not, we're not prepped for burial. We're prepped for victory. And everybody said. But I always had that one problem with that story. So that Jesus could get the glory. The Son of God could get the glory. How can you get glory out of somebody dying? I could not understand that part. Yeah, I got to hurry in. Hallelujah. Some of us need to strip our, our, our grave clothes. In the Jew, Jewish customs of that time, there was a belief that when you die, that your soul hovers your body for three days. I wonder why he waited till the fourth day. So there was no doubt that it was a miracle from God that Jesus was sent. Some of you, he's waiting on the right time so he gets all the praise, all the glory. And you're wondering why it ain't showed up. Because he's got to get the praise and the glory. He'll share, he, he will not share his glory with no man. Amen? Y'all, y'all work with me here a little bit. Hallelujah. Sometimes Jesus will wait until the expiration of your expectation so he can show off his glorification. Y'all, y'all with me? Are y'all with me today? But Pastor, I prayed and the cancer didn't go away. Mm. You may have prayed and fasted And the marriage still ended. Come on. Maybe you fast and you prayed and you believed God that your child would come to the saving knowledge of God. Instead, they ran the opposite way. Come on. Mary. Had everything lined up. Somebody needs to realize God's got an order of what he, how he does things. And guess what? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Sometimes we can't see because all we, we're in the middle of it. Here Mary is anointing Jesus' feet for the, the triumphal entry. Come on. He, he was r- arrested and tortured. And took a cross that he didn't even deserve. He was beaten. Unrecognizable. And yet he took it anyway. So he could pen these words. It is finished. Somebody say it's finished. And then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I got to ask this. Do you believe today? Do you believe? Come on. The true miracle of Christ is that the grave has no sting. The grave has no power. Come on, death is the beginning of life.
Y'all ain't with me. Y'all, 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 do you believe today? Because that's the greatest miracle. It's to leave this body. Is to be present with the Lord. Come on. I, I would ask the question, how many of y'all ready to go? How many of y'all, if you died, would you go to heaven, boy? Hands go up, feet go up, everything go up. But then I ask the question, how many ready to go now? And everybody goes, I'm ready when the time comes. How many, again, how many say you need a miracle in this place today? If you'll stand to your feet this morning, I want to pray with you. I want to, I, I want to, ask you to dig down deep and do everything that you can within your within your own soul is believe again believe again be willing to take that chance on him to believe again for he is the same yesterday today and forever Father we come before you we humble ourselves and we say thank you that your son went to that cross and bore our sins upon it that he paid ransom for each one of us Father we thank you for the privilege to be able to come boldly to your throne with our prayers and supplications. Father, I believe that every ear that is heard, that is here, and those that are watching by live stream, I ask right now for your anointing that, Father, that they will get real with you. Have those hard conversations. To say, God, help me. And I believe that Life Spring Church is, is more than just a church that is a hospital for the sick. And Father, right now, we just ask for your healing anointing to flow. When we're confused, when we don't know what to do, when life throws us curveballs, help us be able to dodge them and still trust you. God, for everyone that's going through something painful today, I ask for your healing anointing to flow from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. We ask for peace that surpasses all understanding. And God, I just lift up my brothers and sisters right now. Everyone. Family sometimes can be a, a fickle thing to deal with. I ask for an anointing of generational curse, breaking chains in our families. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty and holy name. And everybody said, amen. If you receive this for you today, give God some praise. They're going to praise us out of here.